Let's face it, business technology is frustrating and complex. So how do you make sure it works for your team? To make IT right, start the discussion at go-domain.com. You're listening to Discussions by Domain, a podcast for business leaders. Our discussions may be with people you've probably heard of before, but the majority of our guests are in the trenches, professionals like you and I, with the same challenges and struggles of keeping up in the Northeast. They're implementing strategies, overcoming hurdles. They're leading the fastest growing businesses in our region. My name is Anthony DeGraw, Director of Partnerships at Domain Computer Services and the host of this show. When I'm not talking with business leaders, you'll hear stories from behind the scenes of Domain and the ups and downs of our own growth journey as we intend to take over the world. Just kidding. Well, maybe. Let's get into the show. Welcome to another episode of Discussions by Domain. I am your host, Anthony DeGraw, and today we have Paul Smith back. He is going to talk to us about a new book that he has written called The Four Days with Kenny Tedford. And real quick, just to give some backstory, uh, Kenny is a very interesting human, so I'm going to read what Kenny is all about. Born with brain damage that left him with the intellectual ability of a fourth grader, deaf in both ears, legally blind in one eye, partial paralysis on his left side, and difficulty speaking until the age of 10, Kenny Tedford Jr. is a remarkable combination of Helen Keller and Forrest Gump. Mocked as the retarded kid in school, Kenny's life could easily have been a sullen tale of victimhood, but through Kenny's stories and the unique way he views the world, co-author Paul Smith learns more about courage, faith, family, persistence, pride, hard work, kindness, respect, and humility in four days than he'd learn in his entire lifetime. Paul, this sounds absolutely intriguing. Let's just say, let's start with where did you and Kenny meet? How did you guys meet? Yeah, so I certainly didn't see it coming, but uh, I was actually at a three-day storytelling festival of all places, and I actually had a speaking part of it in one room. But then afterwards, I, you know, it's a three-day event. I only spoke for 30 minutes. I want to go see some of the other performers. So I went into this other room and I, I'm one of those guys that likes to sit on the front row. Like I want to be right up there and I want to, I want to see what's going on. And so I'm up I'll, there. And he, I'm the same exact way. <laughs> are you? Okay. Yeah. Most people aren't, right? You go to a conference and most people fight for the back seats, right? Because yeah. they're closer to the coffee. I, 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 I do have to, yeah, I have to admit it does have to do mostly with my eyesight, but anyway, okay. yes. Well, <laughs> you know what? That, that, that could be my, my issue as well. But um, so anyway, I'm up there like alone by myself on the front row because most people are in the back and this guy comes in and he sits right next to me and there are a lot of other empty seats up front, but he sits like right next to me um, and he was an older man and, and kind of overweight and he, he walked kind of funny, he obviously had a, a limp of some kind and, and, uh, but he had this guy with him like, and this, this, and the, the first man was older in his sixties, but there was a young 20 something kind of guy that accompanied him. And they both walk over and the older guy sits down right next to me and the younger guy grabs one of the chairs. These are just like folding chairs or something. Grabs one of the chairs, turns it around backwards, puts it right in front of the older guy and he sits down in it with his back to the stage, right? He's facing the older guy like oh, face wow, to face. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that's kind of weird, right? <laughs> I don't know what to make of that, but I can't wait to see what happens next, right? Yeah. Well, eventually the, the performer started and as soon as the performer started talking on stage, this young guy who's turned around backwards starts doing sign language to the guy. Uh, saying, yeah. So then it was, oh, the, the guy's, this guy's deaf, right? Yeah. He's got a sign language interpreter. And, but I was even more intrigued then because I was like, this is a three-day storytelling festival and a deaf guy just came to it. I just thought that was pretty bold, right? Yeah. So I just, I had to meet the guy. Anyway, so at the first break, I, I met him and we ended up having lunch together that day. And so I, he ended up, you know, in one hour telling me, you know, a, a small synopsis of his life. And it was just fascinating that all the, these incredible things that have happened to him and all of these different challenges and disabilities that he has, you know, because if that was me, I think I would just be an angry and bitter person. I'd be angry at life. Right. Yeah. But he's not, I mean, he's just the most charming individual I think I've ever met. 
And I just was fascinated that how can that possibly be, right? Yeah. Um, so I knew almost immediately I, I wanted to write a story and it fortunately worked out that he wanted it written. So we, we ended up striking a deal to do that. Yeah. What, what made you decide on that? Uh, like any details from that, that lunch or those first couple days with him? Well, it, so there was after that, like, I didn't know if I'd ever see the guy again. Cause, cause I mean, he had traveled and I had traveled to come to this event and then we, you know, went our separate ways. So I never knew if I'd see the guy again. Um, but about a year later, I'd signed a contract to write my, my second book, which was uh, parenting with a story. So it was a book that was going to be about like a hundred different people, like one short story about something interesting in their lives that um, was worthy that, where they learned an incredible life lesson that would be worthy of passing on to the next generation. So I knew I needed to interview a hundred interesting people. And the first person I thought of was that deaf guy I met at that conference, right? A year ago, like yeah. he had, a, I got to interview that guy. So he's the first person I called to interview for this book. And I'm in this interview on the, and I, I'm, it was a Skype or something because he's, he's deaf. So I couldn't call him. So he's got to read my, my lips on the oh, video. Wow, right. Yeah. And, um, and we're like halfway through this interview and he's already told me like a half a dozen more like fascinating stories. And at exactly 39 minutes into this interview, and I know that because I, I, I recorded these calls, right. I said to him, I was like, dude, have you ever like, written all these down, like you could write a whole book about your life. It would be fascinating. And he said, yeah, people ask me that all the time, but he said, I just, I can't write. Like that's part of my, okay. my learning disability. I can speak and I can tell stories, but I just, I just can't write. Yeah. Wow. And that's when I said something that I'm certain surprised me as much as it surprised him as it was fumbling out of my mouth. I, I said, I'll do it. I'll write your book. And you know, we both like just had this awkward silent moment like holy crap did I just say what I think I said because yeah. I had I hadn't written a single word of a book I was contractually obligated <laughs> yeah. to write like I had that, you know I had a year-long process in front of me but I you know we eventually did it we had to meet in strange places and like you know because you don't want to be on Skype all day with somebody interviewing him. you need to be face to face and yeah it's a lot you know easier, yeah. yeah so I had to you know, I saw him at his house he came and stayed at my house that was the, the four days with Kenny Tedford the title of the book is because most of our interviews took place right here in this house uh, over four days of you know eight, nine, ten hours a day of me asking him questions about his life and him telling me. And during those four days, I mean, it's just this amazing four days for me and my family because you know my wife and kids got to listen to some of these stories as well. And yeah, he walked into this house a stranger and he left like a family member. Like I, you know, can you imagine somebody's entire life going by in four days in front of you? Like, you know, like I know him a, a whole lot better than he knows me. Right? Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> I mean, he knows me a little bit, but I know him a lot. Right. Yeah. And after you read the book, you'll know, you'll know him a lot as Very well. Interesting. So. What, a, what unique challenges did you have, I, um, whether it be across just these four days or even the entire time that you had to, to write this? Yeah. So, well, communication was obviously the biggest thing, right? So, so he, so he's deaf and I don't speak sign language. So that created a barrier. So we, yeah. we realized, you know, we had to be face to face or, or over a video call and, and face to face was much better. I mean, like, you know, you're, you're looking at me right now, but you know, you'd be better if, and if you had to read my lips, you need to be a lot closer. Right. Yeah. So we had to figure out ways to physically be together. And so like, that was why I invited him here. He invited me there. We met in between sometimes we met uh, in, in parks and hotel conference rooms and, you know, all over the place to get this okay. done. But also like just, for me, writing a book, I mean, it was the fourth or I guess fifth book that I'd written, but the first biography, right? Most of my books are business books and they're, you know, about short stories. I've never written a, you know, a whole book about one person before. Yeah. Um, in fact, the longest story I've ever written in my life was two pages long until this, right? <laughs> and, and <laughs> so I had some writing challenges to overcome. I didn't know how to, how to do this. And plus, like, you know, how do you write a story, a, a life story, in first person from somebody else's point of view who can't write. Like I've never seen his writing. Yes. Right. Yeah, so how do yeah. I write in his voice? He doesn't have a writing voice cause he just doesn't write much. So I wanted it to be in his oral voice, but you know, yet there's a lot of things that are communicated non-verbally. I mean, the, you know, the guy's telling me stories about how he's in the third grade and the other kids are coming up to him on the playground and making fun of him and going, Hey Kenny, uh, what's wrong with you, man? Like, 
well, how do you write that? Yeah, uh, I don't know. How do you spell that? Like, you know, yeah. so I had to figure out ways to, to, to write in words these strange, awkward, humiliating moments he was having in life with people. So I had multiple challenges, but it was, it was fun to overcome them. Yeah. Now this wasn't just a biography, right? This was also a story about his impact on you and your family. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah. So, um, so we, this, my publisher and I decided to write the book more in the form of, like, I don't know if you've ever read it, the Tuesdays with Maury. Okay. Um, yeah. so, um, and I think they, they might've made a movie about it, but, but basically instead of it just being a biography of Kenny's life, it's a, a view into our interviews at my house and a few other places that we met. So in the book, it's, it's, you'll see me asking him a question and him answering it by telling a story about that point in his life. And then you'll see me reflecting on that story and what it meant to me and how it impacted me and what it, and, and some of it was things that I said to him at the moment. And some of it was just what was going on in my brain, like okay. me reflecting on that and the impact it had on me mentally and emotionally. And um, yeah, I, I think I mentioned earlier, I even learned some business lessons out of these, these interactions. But so, you know, 20 or 30% of the book is me thinking about how these stories have impacted me personally, as well as my wife and my kids. Like, so my wife and kids are characters in the book as well, because, you know, like I said, he, they were present for many of these stories also. And, you know, when he came into our house, they just didn't know who this guy was and were kind of afraid of him, you know, and by yeah. the time he left, like we wanted to adopt him into our family. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so it, it's a much more personal story than just his life. Gotcha. Gotcha. And let's, let's jump into some of these, uh, these business lessons. I, I remember when we first connected, you had told me that your, your publisher, I think had pushed you to include some of these things or, or at least think about them. So, mm -hmm. so let's, let's dive into that a little bit. Yeah. So one of them was to admit your mistakes and limitations um, and then move on because Ken Kenny does that really well. And I, I learned that over the course of, you know, writing this book about him. Yeah. Um, in fact, my wife articulated that the best, she, she said, you know, after he had left, she was like, you know, I was so worried when, before he came here, I was afraid I wouldn't be able to make him comfortable in our home because I just, I don't know what his limitations are and what kind of food he likes. And, you know, you know, he, he's deaf and he doesn't, he doesn't walk well. So should I, you know, should we put him on the main floor or in the basement? You know, like all these worries she had, and she concluded at the end, you know, Kenny lives with those limitations every day and he doesn't seem to make a big deal of them. So why should I? And, and it, it also made me realize that, um, you know, he just accepts what his limitations are instead of worrying about them constantly. And so it made me wonder, you know, if at work, if we did that, we would behave differently. So if anybody ever told you at work, yeah, you know, you did a really lousy job on that uh, last analysis or a memo you wrote for the boss, <laughs> you know, or, yeah. or if it's your boss telling you that, you know, you feel terrible about it and, and people can tease you about it and it, it bothers you over and over and over again. But imagine instead if your response was, yeah, I really screwed that up, didn't I? But let me tell you what I learned from that. And then you tell them what you learned from it. And it's like, I'm, I'm just not going to be bothered by this. I, I made a mistake, but I learned from it. And I don't want to share with all of you what I learned from it. I just, it's just a, it's such a better way to respond to having made a mistake than being defensive about it and denying that it happened and blaming yeah. other people, which is the kind of things we normally do, right? Yeah, no, I, I love that. That's a great lesson. And uh, it, it goes back to our conversation we had the first time too, also about speed. It's like, you know, we, we could focus on those negatives. We could focus on those weaknesses, but what is that? What are we gaining? We're not, we're not gaining anything by doing that. Let's, let's talk about the lessons we learned and then let's talk about how we can take better actions going forward. Uh, and that, that's awesome. That's yeah. really good. So, so another one was um, the, just the recognition that all of us have disabilities. Like instead of thinking of, yeah, there are some people in the workplace that work with us on our team that have these disabilities. They may be in a wheelchair, maybe they're blind or maybe they're deaf. But the truth is we all have disabilities. They're, they're just different. So for example, I realized after writing this book with Kenny, what my disability is and what my wife's disability is. So for example, mine is directions. Geographically, I am directionally 
challenge. Like I, Anthony, I kid you not, I literally have gotten lost in my own neighborhood. Like with, <laughs> within plain view of my house, okay? Wow, yeah. I'll be, my wife and I will be, have been on walks before in our neighborhood and I'm like, I'm done walking. How do I get home? <laughs> She's yeah. like, we live in that house right there, you know? I mean, it's amazing how stupid I am with directions. Okay. Well, and my wife cannot do junior high school math at all. To save her life, she cannot do junior high school math. So instead of us constantly beating each other up over this, we just accept it and move on. So, and my kids, my, our kids know what mom and dad's disabilities are. So they know, never ask dad for directions. Yep. Don't ask mom for help with math. <laughs> yeah. right? That's it. Right. Yep. And so yep. we accept it and we move on. But I, it, when I realized that it made me feel less like I was somehow superior to Kenny or anybody else with disabilities. I just, look, I was born really, really bad with directions. And my wife was born really pretty bad with math, yeah. you know? And Kenny was born pretty bad with hearing. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, so what? Right. So yeah. we all have disabilities and abilities. And I just, I, I feel better about recognizing that in myself and others. And I think if we did that at work, we'd all get along better. Yeah, and I, I think that's a really good point, uh, especially like I'll, I'll take it to the, the sales world real quick. I think one, one of the biggest strengths that I potentially have is that I'm very comfortable with telling somebody what we can't do, what we're not mm. good at, and even good just passing on an opportunity. Like, thank you for coming to us with this opportunity. It sounds like a great one. This just isn't our strength right here. This isn't what we focus on. And you'd be best off, you know, going here instead of trying to shove something through. It, it's not going to be a good result for anybody. Us as the company, it's not going to make my engineers happy. It's not going to make the client happy. It's just a complete mess. And I think admitting what you're good, not good at, and, and being able to communicate that and be comfortable with it like you just did with the directions and math and everything like that, I, I think is a, a sh it ends up being a strength, I think. Yeah, me too. Good, good for you for doing that. Yeah. Um, I'll share one more if you got time yeah, for it. Yeah, we got some time. Um, so one of the people in the book, uh, her name is Sandy, and it's a, a woman that hired Kenny to do a, a, a job one time. And he did not like her. And he was convinced that she did not like him. And, and, and I think both of them were right at, at the time. They did not <laughs> like each other. In fact, yeah, she probably would not have hired him, but her boss made her hire him or something. Yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. Details are in the book. But anyway, they just really did not get along, but they had to work together. And so eventually, Kenny asked her to have lunch with him. Let, let, can we just have lunch and just talk and yeah. get to know each other? And then that led to, well, well, let's have dinner after work one time. And so they, they did that, or maybe it was on a Saturday afternoon. Anyway. Over the course of a couple of lunches and a dinner, they ended up becoming, I mean, just cordial, productive, you know, people at work. I mean, th th this isn't like a romance story that they turn out no, to. No, yeah, like they colleagues, just, acquaintances. Yeah, they like, just became normal, functioning yeah. uh, people that work together that shared respect and, and care about each other. And today, I would even call them, you know, close friends. But it, the, the lesson that he learned from that and that I learned from that was that uh, it's really hard to not like somebody once you get to know them, yeah. and, right? And, and that happens all the time at work. There'll be somebody at work that we just don't like because the first time we met them, some, they said something that we didn't like, and so we just never liked them. But if you spend just a little bit of time, a couple of lunches and one dinner or whatever, getting to know them and their family and how they grew up, and once you know those things about somebody, it is honestly hard to hate them, Yeah. right? So, yeah. so pick out those people that you're just – don't get along with at work and invest a little bit of time getting to know them and letting them get to know you. And the odds are like 90% that your problems will go away. It's so true. Yeah. This, is, this is internal with people that you work with, or even it could be people you don't work every day or in a different location uh, and just spending, investing some time and energy into those relationships. And the same thing with customers. I mean, you've been in the corporate world for a very long time and you understand this. The way a customer or people on the customer's team may treat an organization or a certain individual via email or mm -hmm. a voicemail, something that's not like tangible is completely different than when you bring those two people together, you go visit them in person 
all of a sudden everybody's uh, I like to use the word kosher every every yeah. everybody's good because it's now I'm a person I'm not just this right. like email URL address right no that that's a that's a really good lesson anything else you'd like to share about your experiences Kenny's experience doing this with the book before we wrap up yeah I guess the the last thing would just be to let you know that this book about Kenny's life I mean just imagine somebody like Kenny with all of these, you know, problems of a Helen Keller and a Forrest Gump and the, the hilarious mishaps that must happen. Yeah. <laughs> and they do. And so the, the book is, it, I mean, there are parts of it that are just devastatingly sad and tragic. And there are parts that are just laugh out loud, funny, and parts of it that are, you, you'll cheer with joy at his successes. So, I mean, there's an emotional roller coaster that goes on through here, but it's mostly because you've got this, this human being that's basically like a child mentally navigating life in the body of a grown man that has got multiple disabilities and the kind of, you know, things, challenges he's got to overcome and just mistakes that he makes along the way that just like, of course that happened, right? I mean, how could that not happen? Yeah, right? exactly. So uh, it, it's just, it's just a fun, fun read. So yeah. Well, Paul, I really appreciate you coming on again. This has been good, and I think this is completely unique. You use the word emotional roller coaster, and the first thing I was thinking is there's got to be some hilarious stories in the yeah. book. There's also got to be some, you know, some sad issues that you know you need to get through. But that roller coaster, I'm sure, with your writing uh, and how well you do with that, that's you got to lead people on a journey, and that's absolutely wonderful. So yeah. thanks for investing the time with Kenny and and doing this book. That's great. You bet. Cool. So everybody, this is Paul Smith. He wrote Four Days with Kenny Tedford. Highly, highly recommend you check it out. We'll make sure we link to it, Paul's profiles, um, as well as Kenny's profiles to see where you can check him out as well and get a, uh, a good background on him. That would be really cool. So Paul, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. To ensure that you never miss an episode, subscribe to the show in iTunes or your favorite podcast player. This guarantees that every episode will get delivered directly to your device. To help us get the word out, share with a friend, leave a review, and check out our discussions on the web at go-domain.com slash podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.